Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 24th of January. Reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Uh, great to have Meg here and we'll add other attendees as they arrive. So topics on the agenda for today, news, review the weekly change log pull request, open pull requests, and there are several that Meg's done pre-review on. And then I think we may have one other topic, which was the, uh, a, let's see, improve a plugin ah. uh, pull request. I haven't made nearly enough progress on it, but that feels like a good one. And then I think we're settled. We need, we need, we have some action items. Maybe I should put a section for action items here because I'm behind on my action items. Okay. One of them is action items is that create the community.jenkins.io post to discuss she code Africa project ideas. Hi, Diraj. Hello, Mark. Hello, Meg. Hello, Kristen. Oh, okay. hey, Kristen's here. That's great. OK. Yay. Yeah, do we have anything else with uh, GSOC or SheCode Africa? Good question. So let's, how about we put a topic on the list for uh, Google Summer of Code, just in case we need to discuss further? I actually have something um, through for she code. I have a crazy thing just to run by. It may be an awful idea. I don't want to bring it up when they're here. Okay, great. Well, so then let, this is a great place to discuss it. So let's let's put it through and, and we've got those two. Any other topics we need to put on the agenda? No, nothing from my side. Okay, great. All right. so. Let's talk news first. So there are 15 or so plugins that have been suspended from distribution or will be suspended within a day or two. Uh, these are plugins that rely on the relatively non-standard JRuby-based runtime that was created many years ago and the Jython runtime. So what those were is it allowed you to write a, a Jenkins plugin in Ruby and have it executed by JRuby or let you write it in Python and have it executed by Jython. And they created all sorts of terrible problems in trying to maintain the code. And one of the very early Jenkins enhancement proposals, JEP7, proposed to get rid of this, those things all the way back in 2018. And we have now in 2021 or 2022 done it. So just be aware if, if you get people howling in outrage that some six or seven year old plugin no longer runs. Yes, we know. Uh, and just to give some hint of how, how difficult it is, none of these JRuby based plugins run on Java 11 at all. Okay. And so Java 8 is not going to be with us forever and therefore it was doomed. And there's only one Jython based plugin other than the base, the runtime environment itself. So not a big sacrifice in either case. On the Jython ones, the last release was over five years ago. Okay. So they're ancient. Has there been noise yet? No. Well, yeah, an, an occasional, occasional bug report saying, hey, when I switch to Java 11, this plugin doesn't load. The answer is yes, that's true. It doesn't uninstall it. Yeah, uh, but not over just dropping JRuby. There hasn't been anything to no, pay. No, no, uh -uh. it's, and, and even if there was, there's truly nothing we can do about it. If someone wants to bring a lot of engineering skill, and I mean, Jesse Glick worked on that. So that's the caliber of engineering skill you'd have to yeah. bring. So no, it's, it's not changing. All right, next topic. Uh, LTS, Mark, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. So I, I realized that I think, uh, I can discuss uh, more about uh, uh, plugin health score project as well. A little bit more about Good. It. So let's put that under GSOC project ideas. Exactly. Yes. Good. All right. Plugin health score. Yep. Good. Very good. Okay. Thanks. All right. 
So LTS baseline selection is this week. What that means is uh, Wednesday, the project will choose the next baseline for the March uh, 2022 LTS. And it looks to me like 331 that was released last Friday or 332 due to release tomorrow are the most likely candidates. Significant UI changes, be sure you watch the UX SIG recording. It's a thing of beauty to watch Jan Farachik uh, demonstrate the, the new user interface changes. It, ah. it's, it's a great discussion to have. And thanks to Hervé Lemur, there is a whole bunch of chapter headings on this thing that if you hover in the right place, I forget if you look at these things down here or hover someplace along here, it will actually show, oh, here it is, here are the chapters. And these chapters give you titles for the, the subsections. Oh. So yeah, don't miss your chance to review this. Of course, we will include in the change log and in the upgrade guide, descriptions of these changes, but this is a good chance to familiarize yourself with what's coming. Do we need a plan for updating the docs or are we just gonna wing it? Oh, good question. Uh, docs update uh, We're gonna review. Have to take new pictures, right? Like, or sorry, new screenshots. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. And I don't have I don't have a plan for updating the outdated screenshots. I don't know how many there are, but it's certainly worth the the new UI is so so much better looking. Uh, things like here, I've got to show it to you. Notice this. All those nice and smooth rounded edges and the, ah. the plugin manager looks like this. Again, smooth rounded edges, all sorts of things, just absolutely good looking. Notice that, hey, enabled looks like an enabled switch. And the revert wow. has a go backwards and the uninstall is an X. It's, it's really, Jan has done a great job. Very beautiful, exactly. So, so good, good question. We could, uh, that's one where we could consider uh, She Code Africa project wow. to review the documentation for outdated screenshots, right? I mean, that's right. something that would be a real help. I wonder if there's, do we have any other contributors who are just writers? It seems not, like most of the contributors are really techie people. Right, not many. I'm, I'm not aware of any. What I'm wondering just is, I know I always intended to do stuff, but it was like it, most of the work was this techie stuff. I wonder what would happen if we put out an appeal that with the new user interface, we, we need, you know, your tech, you know, they may work with tech writers and that are a little bit interested and say, this is a great opportunity for. Yeah, them. good, good suggestion. So how about, how about there is a, a concept of a good first issue. Right. And we just had one contributor who was picking up good first issues. And so, after the March release, and actually we could start now with the weekly release, use the weekly release to prepare for the March LTS. And the idea is identify screenshots that need to be updated. Good. We, do we don't have versioning, so we can't do anything until it's released, right? Well, but it's you, do we go this ahead thing that I'm showing you here is already released. It just oh, okay. happens to be, it's released in a weekly release right now, 2.331. Okay. But that's, I think that's perfectly reasonable for us to say, hey, we're going to go ahead and get ready for the update. Cool. So let me put this as an action item for me. I'll create a good first issue to review the docs for up to outdated images. Okay. 
All right, next, next piece of new news of, of news is that infrastructure issue tracking is now moved to JIRA from JIRA to GitHub issues. So there's a, a repository called Help Desk. And this repository has in it the Jenkins Infra issues and we're seeing all sorts of positive side effects from this. So I submitted a request, hey, we need to use, we need to use the latest JDK. They just released it a few days ago. And guess what? It gives us an automatic link into somebody else's tool where they track this. And you see that this is the Eclipse project that's building it. And now we're coupled to each other. So a Jenkins issue is mentioned in their issue tracker. Big win. Okay, any questions on issue track? It doesn't affect us directly as far as I can tell, but any questions on issue tracking? No, nope. very cool. Yes. Like, why did they move from Jira to GitHub? Because Jira is used by companies to track, right? So it's like more official thing. Yeah, and what so. we found was that GitHub issues, so, so I'll show you one of the, the really powerful things that we just learned about. When I do new issue now, I've got templates that will let me, for instance, say, hey, here's a documentation issue and it has forms built into it that will let me prompt uh -huh. for exactly what we need. Right. Okay, the, the thing that's affected is get.jenkins.io and it's affected this way. And this kind of, has, this has improved the quality of issues we're receiving from people who are reporting it and it doesn't require that they have a Jenkins.io account. Oh, cool. So, so no need to go get an account in order to report a bug. Mm, nice. Makes sense. Okay. So it, it's also a, a better fit for ha projects like Hacktoberfest, right? Because they're accustomed to tracking issues there. It's no account on Jenkins.io required and easier linking to other open source projects. Okay. Yeah. So next topic for this Friday's platform special interest group, I'll be bringing a draft of the Java 8 end of life Jenkins enhancement proposal. Haven't started it yet, but I got to get it ready for then. Um, the right now, the idea is either June uh, 2022 or September 2022 LTS release will drop Java 8 support. Java 11 only with uh, <laughs> Java 17 support in the future. And this is for controller only. I can still run Java 8 agents. No, no, this will be controller and agents. Controller. You can still run Java 8 from inside an agent. You'll just invoke the Java 8 compiler from a process that's running in Java 11. Okay. So it doesn't, this doesn't stop you from, from using any build tool you'd like in, on, on the, the agent. Good, good. Okay, next news item. Uh, this is the long news section. Sorry for being so long and boring here. Internet Explorer 11, uh, official end of life from Microsoft is June of 2022. And the Jenkins project will probably drop support even sooner than that. Um, the idea is it's dead. It's been dead for quite a while. Microsoft Edge, the replacement, uh, will likely be made a tier one uh, platform for us. Now, because Edge is based on Chromium, we don't think that will be any big surprise. Any, any other questions there on news or other topics? All right. 
Next topic then, the weekly change log pull request. So here is the text in the weekly change log. Correct the location of the build progress bar. Um, can you show the PR in detail? Uh -huh. Sure. I don't get the context. Yeah, yeah it's it's an, an interesting one for sure. So core pull requests. Okay, so here's the before condition. Notice where the word console output appears and where the progress bar is. Uh -huh. This is a recent regression. After, it looks like it should. Progress bar on the far right, console output on the left. Okay. So, Tex, how about restore location of progress bar to proper location? Something like that. Okay. I, 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 yeah, that's sort of what was there. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. But since it is a regression. That's a good point. We should note regression in, I'm not sure which version it was, 2.320 probably. Uh, okay. I think let's look and see if he tells us when it regressed. Yeah, I don't see it. I think that's a reasonable, a reasonable guess for when it regressed. Yeah. Let's call it 321. Okay. Good enough on the new phrasing. Yes, I'm happy. All yes. right, then let's run that action and it will be ready for when the build runs tomorrow. Okay, good. So we're done with the, oh, no, nope, one more change. That's right. We have to say we've reviewed it and approved it. That must be one of the shortest change logs we've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and, it's like, wow, I kept waiting, you know, for another one to come up, but right, my where, goodness. Where, where, where are the rest of the things? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> all right, GSOC project ideas. So, uh, Diraj, you had plug in health score as a topic. Yes. So, I had some doubt about this topic, and uh, I asked in the community.jenkins.io for this project. And uh, Jake was very kind enough to explain it to me in depth. So I understood the idea. I just wanted to see if you have anything else to add. So my understanding of this project is if we want to uh, the end goal is that uh, in the plugins.io site, there will be, uh, as we know, we get some uh, small tabs for each plugin. So on each tab of a plugin, there will be a section like a score, which will be there to signify how healthy, let's say a plugin is. So, and that will be calculated calculated based on some factors that uh, can be picked from the contributing to the open source document. And, uh, and the project, I think just stops there. We will not be attempting to solve it by ourselves. It's just uh, a way to show the developers or users that how healthy a plugin is and uh, it, how much help it needs from the users or developers. That's it, right? Oh, Mark, I think you're on mute. Yes, he is. Still on mute. There. Okay. Now, so yes. attributes. So there, the where attributes used in the score 
that's sort of the what, and then how the attributes are used is somewhat the how, how we're computing it. And, and these are all open for discussion. So to, to highlight what Diraj was just saying, if we go to plugins.jenkins.io and we search for um, something about HTTP. So here we see plugins and this little box here that shows in this case, HR or HP or AH, that's one place where the thought was, okay, we could replace that. HR in this case is just an indicator of the name of the plugin. It could instead be some sort of a score or a, a letter grade or a numeric or a pie chart or you know some hint, some indicator, hey, this is how good or, or healthy or unhealthy this thing is. And then what are the things that get involved in deciding how healthy something, something is? Things like, is the plugin up for adoption? Okay, that's less healthy than if it's not. Let's, if we look at some other examples, let's look at some examples like this one. If we count the number of open issues and we see that there are 500 open issues, that's not as healthy as something that has, say, 50 open issues. Does it have documentation for the steps? Does it have documentation? That's a good one, right? So those, those kinds of things are, and, and is the documentation tracked in GitHub or is the documentation tracked in the old wiki where it can't be edited? That kind of thing. Oh, I meant the yeah. stuff that feeds into the syntax generator or whatever. Right, exactly. Okay. So those are, those are all parts of this plugin health score project idea. And, and we can see it would take, there's, there's an awful lot of work to be done there. Diraj, did you have questions, more questions about it? Yes, uh, so this process of calculating the score will be fully automated, right? For all the plugins. Right. Hmm, okay. Um, right. So do you have any uh, specific, like not specific, any rough idea, like how we can achieve this? Uh, kind of any technology as suggested by Bazel as well. Uh, we can use uh, ReFaster to uh, automatically change the code based on some pattern or something like that. Yeah, so this this is distinct from Basel's Basel's topic. Basel, that's a different that's a different suggestion, which was automated, automated plugin improvement pull requests. And that's that's a different thing. So let's hold that one for a little bit, Diraj, and, and we. So this one, for example, we've got a we've had a a small prototype running um, that uses a Google Sheet to extract uh, data from the plugins, the update center. And I think it also extracts from plugin repositories and shows various attributes like, um, let's see, let's gathers data from and shows a score that it computes based on a formula it chooses based on the data it extracted. So it had, um, think of it as a, a thousand plus plugins, some classified green, you can guess green means okay, some yellow, some red, based on the criteria that were selected. And, and that okay, a Google Sheet might not be how we do it long-term because in order to deliver it to the plugin site and to the plugin manager, uh, it probably means how to deliver and the how to deliver would likely be uh, through the Jenkins Update Center.
adding additional data. Would it also show on the plugin manager then? Exactly. That's the idea is that we would, we would like to have something on this UI showing on the installed and on the available a hint of what the score is for that plugin. Right. Now I'm not a UI designer. And so we've, we, we haven't had lots of ideas yet about how do we put that, but you could envision maybe over here, a column that's, that's the score column or something like that. And of course, this is as a Google Summer of Code project idea, this is just an idea the, the the Google Summer of Code contributor or the candidates should submit their proposal and their plan for how they would like to do it. Right. Makes sense. So can you also share the Google sheet that you're talking about here? It would be very I, helpful. I, yeah, that I don't know if I can yet. I've got, that's one we may want to check with Jake on. Jake Leon has oh, okay. the sheet and what it has is it's got, it has some embedded credentials inside the sheet. It, okay, it really no was a very fast prototype, right? And so <laughs> it's not, not safe to share it because it, it really has an embedded, some embedded credentials. Yeah, that makes sense. Then there's no need to share. But, but showing a demonstration of it, I think is a cool idea. It's like, hey, this is, here's something that, that went very rapidly. Somebody put together very quickly that gives us a high level view. And it already highlights some things about, oh, wow, I didn't expect that plugin to be read. Why is that plugin mm -hmm. read based on the scoring algorithm? Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Just wanted to get an idea like how they are calculating that all. So right. there's no need to share the sheet if it has some credentials. I understand. Exactly. Yeah. So now one of the things that's been requested is it they would like that it's it's extensible by others so that if someone wants to add their own attributes and use it for scoring, that would be a, a, a preferred thing. I I'd like to add the following additional attributes. And and they may not be suitable for the the general display, but more for some specific need somebody has inside their company or in some other place. Hmm. So if someone selects a custom uh, score for their, um, their scoring system, that will be visible locally, right? Not, or, not to everyone. Correct. They would have to provide their own update center to deliver that data. Hmm. The Jenkins Update Center wouldn't mm. deliver it, correct? Mm, okay. And now it, it could also be that it could be through a second service that uses the same key as the Jenkins Update Center, but but I that part hasn't been discussed in depth yet with the Update Center experts. I suspect the plugin site and the plugin manager will have an easier time of it if they just use data from, if we just extend the update center data model. Probably. I'm thinking that having the tool just do the three classifications would be weak, that we'd be better off to have a numeric assignment and then have the tool say that, you know, 80 to 100. And that might be something that would be extensible because what I could see is some sophisticated shop could say, you can't do anything that's worse than this. And it might be in the middle of one of those color ranges or something. Exactly. Well, and, and I could even see potentially things like, hey, I want a multi-attribute score. I don't want to simplify this to a simple color or to a simple letter grade. I want something right. that's got more attributes than that because there may be, I may say, look, I'm giving this thing an F in security and an A in these other things. I might so, like an indication of whether a score has gone up or down in the last. Ah, period. now that's a good, a good point. And that is um, a historical view, view of the score. I hadn't thought of that one. That's an interesting suggestion. Good. And that, and that does make sense. Hey, is this, 
is this plugin score increasing or decreasing over time? Well, because I might want to know if I've got something installed that I'm using, and I might want to know if its quality score starts going south fast. Yes, yes, I, I agree. I think that's a, an interesting piece of data. Yes. Great, thank you. Anything else on plugin health score discussion? No, nothing as of now. So this gives me a rough idea how to do it. So I will research it on, on my own. All right, thanks. Okay, so then then the next the next topic you had mentioned, Diraj, was the automated plugin improvement pull requests. I don't have a lot of of data there or a lot of background there. I can give you my wild guesses and that's about it. Sure. So, yeah, no problem. Okay, so so here the idea is, and this is one provided by Basil Crow. He suggested that, hey, we've got a series of small steps that we've identified. And he then lists a number of steps that are actually in the contributing to open source document. There are more steps than that that he noted, but many of the ones he listed are there. Uh, and then automatically apply those to the to the to plugins and submit the pull requests. Build them and submit the pull request. You left out add after automatic if you care. Yeah. And and my perplexity there was, wow, that sounds that sounds like having a machine write software. And and I'm very interested in that kind of thing. I just don't know how to do it. And he had some suggestions of techniques that might be possible to, to use to do that. Exactly. So it looks like the next step of plugin health score, kind of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. This is a some some set of these are likely to be included in the health score. If your parent palm is not up to date, that should go go against you in the health scoring. If you your Jenkins base version is long out of date, you're claiming that you'll support Jenkins 1.600. <laughs> that should go against you because the, nobody tests that far back. Right. Makes sense. Oh, and fold into some of your uh, test coverage numbers that you've got, Mark. Oh, that's a that's an well, interesting. Well, for idea. already for all the plugins, you can you've got that those statistics, which aren't perfect, but they're interesting. Yeah. So well, and that's. That's a, that's a good one. That one's actually in the, the test coverage thing is in the list of, of, of uh, candidate measures. So yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Now the embarrassment factor there is quite high. So good, all right. Any other topics on, or any, any questions, Diraj, that I can need to defer to or say I don't know the answer to? What, what do you have additional questions on plugin improvement pull requests? Um, not anything as of now, so I would think more on uh, plugin and health score first, and then I'll shift my focus to the second one as well. Okay, great, thanks. All right, now Meg, you had the next topic, She Code Africa project ideas. What, right. What's um, on your mind? I was thinking, we seem to have some people there that are interested not in coding and not in documentation, but in project and product management. and you put in a tremendous amount of work running SheCode Africa last year, and it may be worse this year. Had you thought about taking on sort of the equivalent of a TA or an assistant? And you could maybe, I mean, I don't, I think, oh, you could save Mark time. No, it'd probably take more time because you'd probably have to meet with them and stuff. But whether you could potentially, I mean, pretty quickly, they could be the ones that had to turn the recording into something that's publishable and get that published mm. and but you could go over with them you know deciding the agenda how you decide what's in the agenda um possibly even by later in the project we might have some meetings that you let them run with you there you know ready to take you know you have like the driver instructor that has their own set of controls that they can grab control of the car fast um 
but that's what I mean. It's a legitimate need, and there's some people who seem pretty interested in getting involved in this. That that's their interest, and I wondered if that's something. I mean, that really becomes a question for you because. But it, one thing too might be like I know last time one of the disasters was having me run some of the meetings. I mean, everybody wanted Mark. Um, you know, if if they were doing real writing, I might be useful, but um, and I can contend. You know, I could attend, but you know, and it may have to be you there for the brains, but it might be you're awfully good at this, so you could probably teach them a lot of stuff. That's, I, I think that's an interesting idea. So that, that sort of reshapes the concept as, hey, look, we're going to do an entire project and we're going to have one of your people be a mentored project manager mm -hmm. and others will be the developers on it. Maybe others are the documentation writers for it. Right. Yeah, interesting. And another possibility I thought of is I had the feeling last time, I mean, you couldn't be a nicer person. Everybody was nice, but the, the She Code Africa, they were a little scared to stand up. I mean, some of them were a little scared to say, I'm in trouble. I don't understand this. This doesn't interest me or something. So if, they, if you had an apprentice working with you, that might be someone that they were more comfortable talking to and they could try to solve it or bring it back to you for advice or... I mean, they could get some real, you know, it, it's a big question as to whether you feel like you could absorb that with everything else. I think it sounds, it's an interesting idea. I like it. It gives a, it gives a broader picture to it. Good, good suggestion. I'll include it in the, in the posting to community.jenkins.io. Okay. Okay, good. Other, any other suggestions on She Code Africa project ideas? We've got several more in the in the document later in the notes from previous meetings and i'll use those as well right i mean we i guess we could should we let's take a different uh, same angle should we invite uh someone to be a mentored tester oh all right so interactive testing Exploration of the product. And that one's more complicated because, well, yeah, I think testing's a testing's a very difficult task. And doing it remotely and doing it well is is daunting, but it's it's an interesting one to do. But it's also a I mean, what it would take is somebody who is a hardcore experienced tester who's willing to mentor this person. Right. And, and yeah. that I think is the, is the crucial thing. Someone who says, yes, I'm willing, I'm interested in that, but I don't have the capacity to do test mentoring of a tester. Whereas I could see potentially mentoring a project manager. Right. But if we could get somebody, I mean, even if they did, even if the tester just tested and they watched and surely with testing, there is some grunt work that you can say, this is how I run this test. Now go do that on these other mm -hmm. right. yep. code or something. Um, I mean, it's, you know, I I kept forgetting there that the point, the, the goal of this project was not to improve Jenkins. The goal of this <laughs> right. project was to, to give in, these young women a chance to get some real knowledge that would be useful to them in the future. Right, yep, okay, good. All right. Anything else on the She Code Africa topic? Okay. Next topic then. Open PRs. Okay. Does anybody have anything else they want to discuss before we run out the clock on these? No, nothing from my side. Okay, Mark. Um, click on the first one. It's our old favorite. Okay. Daniel's been looking at it. I, I really, for the rest, I'm going to have less time to devote to Jenkins in a few weeks. So I'd really like to get this one done. Um, and the preview, the last time I checked, yes, the preview is good. Oh, good. Okay, so view deployment is working. It's getting to be one of the longest discussions in a long time. It's fun though. Great, okay, so let's take a look at it. So this is documentation and this is the rework of the securing Jenkins section, right? But I have a, we have a couple of things that have shown up and I realize um, for a mind, the, 
the reason we started this was, first of all, I was sitting on a whole bunch of information that I'd gotten from Daniel some years ago for another purpose that wasn't here and wanted to get that captured before it gets, and I, because I thought it was good. Um, the other one was that Daniel wanted one place where he had, you know, secure, security is tough because it affects everything. And he wanted one place where he could go to quickly click through and see what we had on everything. Mm -hmm. And so then I started thinking that we were going to pull everything into this chapter. Well, we're not. So what we've ended up with is the list on the left is way too long. We may not be able to do anything about that. If you scroll down here, Mark, this is the index.adoc file. I've got a list of everything that's over there in the left. And that's where Daniel first said, this is too long. Okay. Um, now, what I see is, and then when I looked at it, it's like, yeah, the I'll go back up to the top. The topic here is the uh, global configuration. I'm sorry, scoot a little bit down. Where we go. A one little more, bit down. One more. Um, configure global security. Now, to me, what I want is I want a place that's a big screen that I can go and it's going to go item by item and tell me what it's for. And if there's something more to be said, give me a link to it. The next several sections are all within that. In other words, if we had a third level heading, I'd put them underneath there. Since we don't, what I'm thinking is that all of that other stuff should be pulled out and it will show up in the global security, but all those links. Now that means that the chapters would show in the left frame and would not be discussed here, but everything down through, I think CSRF protection, I think rendering unit user content, I can't remember. But most of those would disappear from this listing, but they would still be in the left. Okay, so the so this this then becomes um, a higher level view of think about these things and not just a, a copy of the table of the contents with good right. uh, descriptions right. of the of the chapters that are there. So we okay. get global, and because then and things that are sitting out there waiting to be added here, like there is security for pipeline developers. Mm -hmm. probably going to be very brief because the meat will be in the pipeline, but it will be a place we can look here and see what have we flagged and what are we linking to and, you know, to check it going forward. Um, and to make it, because Mark, because we're all, the old structure, like Daniel said, when he had something new to add, it was hard to add. He had to, you know, trip over the structure trying to find the right place. Our hope is that this will be something that's cleaner to work on. So does that, I mean, I kind of don't like having those two out of sync, but I think in this case, it's the right way to go. Does anybody I, else feel different? I agree with that. I think it makes sense to say that this is a, this, the, the text here is intentionally focused on the user and therefore removes some things that aren't initially relevant there but they can navigate to over here on the left right if if they're and if and it also means that if they're just look if they didn't bother to read the chapter about global security and mm -hmm. they're just what the hell is this markup for format or stuff they've got it there right so and then within that the last one of those is the agent to controller security uh -huh. and that is about to be taken off the ui which means I think it should no longer be a separate chapter here. And I believe the place, I'll just take that content and put it into um, the distributed builds. Ah, ah okay. Controller isolation or, so, so we say it's, it's isolating the controller from the agent, basically protecting it. Right. It's, okay, it's so, so the, next, the next LTS is the one that will remove this, if I remember correctly because 326 yeah. removes it from weekly. So it's gone as of the 331 baseline or 332 right. baseline. The source is, is commented to put in the LTS number when we know what it is. Great, okay. Okay. And now you would, you would move this page one. because oh, Meg, ahead, you, could, you could leave this page, but take it out of the table of contents. So leave uh -huh. it at its current location but by taking it out of the table of contents, it would only be reachable by navigation through clicking other links. Now that, that's a little weird for users who may be used to this kind of navigation along the top bar. Right. I also don't like it because like several of these things are not really things that you're expected to configure there. 
uh, builders that are on, and that's in that that this is what Jenkins does to protect you. And and then they go on, and also this actually reads because um, this whole thing begins with a talk about the distributed process and you know keeping your agents and your control separate from your controller is a good thing. And then we say, but we got one more thing. And then, and I've already modified it, even though it's not yet released. So, but you like being ahead of it. The the note down there says releases prior to. Right. After a week of reading through all of the stuff where we say we're changing this, it's like, no, it's already changed. Now we have to say once upon a time, kids. Right. On the UI. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, no, I so I I think that works folded in. Just wanted to make sure that everybody else agreed. That feels great to me. Okay, and one more, and then we'll move on. And that if you could click on background concepts. Background concepts, okay. And you you know the context of this because we've got security principles, blah blah blah. But a shame we didn't have those before. And then we go into Jenkins execute jobs, and Daniel said that jolted him. And I went back uh, and looked at it. It is Jolie. It worked in a webinar with your voice, Mark. Okay. It's cruised right. You know, the, one of the one of the points, one of the concepts is to know how your system works to see where there could be problems. Um, it jolts. I don't know what to do about it. I. This is maybe background concept should be named. Have a different name. Should we add like a visual separator bar? Would that help? Like a like a line? I, I don't know. Well, Would but that... this is this is isn't isn't the reason it jolted Daniel because it's more than a concept, right? This is this is something that's going to talk in very serious details about what happens, and so maybe this is the wrong place for it. Does it need its own page? Does it right. need? And maybe it should be its own page here. Yeah, that's. Um, I mean, or, or is this is this something that goes into the distributed builds page? Because probably that page that make maybe that makes a little more sense as like the first. Well, oh, we could put it in there. It's like this is how Jenkins rubs jobs. It's important for distributed builds. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, it, like, maybe. Like, oh, go ahead, Kristen. Oh no, I was just thinking because it's it's. Let's look at the background because yeah, it has an introduction paragraph. Um, and then we could actually make this chapter just be security principles rather than background concepts, which is kind of a weak title anyhow. Oh, oh, I like that. So securing Jenkins starts with a section which is security principles. Yeah, wow. I, I think that's very attractive. So instead of calling this page background concepts, you'd consider calling it principles and these right. are interesting i like that i think that's very and attractive at the end of know the system we add a link to the next section mm -hmm. or to that section in back in uh, distributed builds that tells how right right oh, i knew i knew multiple heads could do something about this coolness okay i will implement that hopefully before daniel gets up all right. Yeah, I, I like that. That's that sounds good to me. Okay, and we can scroll down. Mark, we don't have to do it here in real time. Um, this also, I'd gotten, I'd been drinking pipeline uh, Kool Aid, and it was all about how it executes a pipeline, and Daniel's like um, freestyle, but it was almost the same. So we kind of did it. I took a crack at it, but if you had a, because I don't understand how freestyle execute, I don't understand freestyle as much as I do pipeline. So if you had a second to go over there and I'm sure Daniel's going to be knitting at it with a fine tooth comb. So you can decide whether you want to or not. Great. Okay. 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 That's my biggie. Um, if we can go on though, the others and just glance at them and see what's going on. Sure. A more. Yeah. Next, so are you okay with this yes. next one, three, four, zero, six? Okay. What does the tag of chore mean on this thing? It, it means this, so chore is, is a poor, poor label to say reduces the maintenance burden 
or improves the maintainability of this thing. It's it's just a, let's do this because it, it helps overall. Oh, okay. I thought it meant this is going to be a whole lot of work, kids. No. Yeah. You see, you and I have a very negative, at least I have a very negative connotation for the word chore. Uh -huh. and, and therefore, for me, this that label is not a positive label. I take that as negative. Like, I don't like doing chores. Chores right. are, are evil things that... <laughs> that I had to do. And, and no, in this case, it's a reduction of maintenance burden, redu reduction okay. of maintenance overhead. Well, it looks like Daniel closed it and then opened it in June and there was a flurry of discussion and activity. And then it just died. It's just sitting there. Jenkins, and I'm sitting there Jenkins. that it either needs to die for good or be marked on hold or actually get done and implemented. Okay, and I'm not sure. All right, looking at what this is doing. Okay. This is running an, a script that grabs external data to populate it. Well, I would have to see the results. Okay, we've got a way to put the release number in there. So, so the one of the concerns raised in a comment somewhere here was, oh yes, figure out how to identify it. We have that now. Yeah. But, <laughs> but mm -hmm. the uh, I'd have to look at the at the result because we've got the pipeline steps doc generator and this is extracting okay so what he did was he extracted the help oh interesting inline help pages Oh, that's fascinating. So he's providing, a, this is a, another style of the pipeline step stock generator work. This is doing something similar. Uh, for, but for the context sensitive help then? Exactly, right. Yeah, now, now my fear is this is going to generate an awful lot of content with questionable utility and lacking context. So I worry that this needs to be evaluated carefully before we consider merging it. Okay. Um, go down to the bottom of the comments and see, because there was a big discussion, like just, and then it just, you were even part of it back then. Okay, so. But, in, but it's a year and a half old and then it just. Right. Oh, okay, so. Yes, he's, he's correct. The Git plugin has a lot of HTML help files. And I'm, I hope I wrote them well enough that they are helpful without context. But I worry that they may not be as helpful without context as you might dream of. So like, what was the goal of this, maybe? Like so here's, here's the hint as his goal. So what, what he was trying to do is get easily referenced easily referenced locations that were constant where he could point to, um, here's what the help says for this and, and make those on Jenkins.io instead of pointing inside the GitHub repository of an individual plugin. Did, did that answer your question, Kristen? He wants convenient hyperlinks from outside into this location so that he can refer to it and say, hey, here's what the help says, read this. Or look, here's, here's this help that could be useful to you. And he says what he did instead was copying all of this to, oops, to this. Ah, okay, got it. So what, what there was is there was good, useful information in the online help here rendered as HTML. And he wanted that to be available so that he could point to it without duplicating it. 
And he said, I doesn't have a way to point to it without duplicating. So I said, fine, I just duplicated it. And here it is duplicated. Did that answer your question, Kristen? Yeah, because I, I don't know, I was almost seeming like, is this trying to solve one particular problem and making it hard? Because as soon as you have like, you know, some type of documentation, you have to make sure it's current and updated and just randomly pulling out all that like help doc that doesn't seem to make sense in, in context is maybe not what we really wanted to solve. So I think that's kind of like, what are we trying to get, like, what are we trying to do <laughs> to figure out if we need to do something else? If and I updated the context sensitive help, this would also get updated then, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so the, the technique he's using in the pull request is he's reading from the released the released stuff. Okay. So what he does is he downloads the released stuff with, let's see, let's go look at the thing that's being downloaded. It is here. He, and this would be the current version number instead of that version number. He downloads the released stuff and then uses that. Now, I don't see him iterating over all the plugins. So I think this may just be for Jenkins core. Ah, OK. I, I, now, I, I haven't looked at it, right? So I haven't, I haven't done the exploration to see. But I think this, if we look at his example, I think his example page was, with the screenshot, was just Jenkins core. What would it take to iterate all the plugins? A lot of yeah. iterating. That's it, that's not much different than what we do today with plugin step stock generator. It iterates right. all the plugins, right? right? So so it's it's just yeah, it's another loop. And the I challenge is this this list for me is already of daunting length. If I now consider add the Git plugin to this. And that's just one plugin that probably doubles the size of this list. <laughs> and and yeah. if we're doubling the size of this list with one plugin, imagine what will happen to it with a thousand. But does it, who is going to use the list as a list? Uh, good point. Probably nobody, right? This, the list as a list is, is somebody who's talking to a customer and they just want to send them a link and say, read this. Yeah, and that's like I was like, what are that's like I was trying to get down to the root problem of like, what are we actually trying to solve? Because it sounds like it. Um, this is horrible. Like it might just be better to have like one offs. Yeah, and that's yeah, and that's what Daniel did, right? You, yeah. You're exactly right, Kristen. What Daniel did was he said, "Hey, I'm going to do the one off," and the one off right. he did was he copied the content he needed into a destination where he could use it. Yeah, and I. I yeah, so I think that that might be <laughs> a what little bit easier this for me. this way, and we could still go back and we could do it per plugin if wanted. In fact, even have a thing that you could specify the plugin you wanted to do. Sorry, say that again, Meg. What, what if we let this go and be just core, but then had something separate to hand do this for plugins if we ever wanted it, or even one plugin at a time? Yeah, it, I, I still think Kristen's question is a valid question. I'm not sure that there's enough utility in doing this for core to justify this list going in with the presentation and the search challenges that go with it. Uh, like it feels uh, like, it, yeah, that's what I was like. It, it, and even still, like some of the help is going to be so context specific or it's just not going to make any sense whatsoever. I feel like the only, or like, I think the only help that would be really helpful are ones where we have people have written paragraphs explaining like what's going on in the background. Um, and that's why it's like, uh, right. And, and like and help that's... name, is that really like the node help name? Is that really helping? Like name of the node, you know, it's just kind of, it doesn't feel as if it's, yeah, shell help, like, yeah, the, the one that uh, yeah. I was thinking of, okay, the, that I, I could see how this one would have helped me is unstable return probably has some really good verbiage to describe what the concept of unstable is. But 
is this that valuable that I would want the other things cluttering and risking negative comments and hostile remarks, etc., in order to get that one that one piece of text. But if it's, I mean, what I also see is that reviewing context sensitive help is a challenge. This would be something that you could have tell somebody, you know, every once in a while I'll go through just review all of these, look and see what's stupid and what's good and Yes, and, and I guess conceptually there, then you could, we could even consider, is there a way from the resulting page to take them back to the source file so that they could propose a pull request to the plugin that they were, where they were correcting that. Yeah, Correct. so that's good, good insight that this might be a vehicle to encourage people to improve the online help. I mean, could we do this and publish this, like maybe not part of the, it's, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, some, some place where Daniel, anybody else who wants to get to it. Sure. And, and that's, that, that aligns with what Oleg suggested. Maybe it belongs on a javadoc.jenkins.io style service yes. that provides those pages, but is not right inside Jenkins.io. Yeah. Right. I can, I can see that being more useful, but yeah, cause it's just, it's, I'm not, yeah, so I'm not really understanding how, because I look at the the, what the plugin or the site kind of as a little bit more maybe higher level or some other stuff. And it's just, I'm just not seeing how inland help is useful in this particular case. It feels way too close. Right. I, I don't, under, I, I mean, maybe my part thing is like, you can't just point them to, if it is in its own file, like, I mean, you could just point them to GitHub. <laughs> it doesn't really hurt that bad. But, right. um, but yeah, right. say, but yeah, it's, if you want to put it in something that's more, not in Markdown format immediately or ASCII doc format immediately, it probably belongs more in a Java doc site, like like said. Right. So or at least to me, but that's just how I feel like it. Could be and and I think I think Oleg's point is well taken that that if we need this a separate and and we have experience creating those kinds of separate sites. Uh, as an example, here is one that was just created by Hervé Lemur. Uh, very recently, wiki.jenkins.io used to be a confluence site. It is now just a static, static set of web pages. And and he's got a way of maintaining this site automatically. Ah. So so the the technique to create a separate site like that is is relatively well known now. Okay, cool. You know who this would be useful for. We don't have a we don't have a formal support organization for Jenkins IO, but there are support people out there who are having to support customers who are using Jenkins, mm -hmm. and it could be very useful for them in that regard, rather than trying to say go to this screen you know with three three levels down to get to this screen and look for this block and then click the question mark, and sometimes it's an obvious question mark, but I can see for some of these it isn't. Right. Right. Good point. Yeah. And, and I think the use case you just described, Meg, matches with what Daniel was envisioning. Uh-huh. He talks okay. about, hey, it wants to be able to link to it. But then in any event, so it's been so that was what in summer of 21. So that was like six months ago. We had this little flurry of discussion. No, I take. Yeah, 18 months ago. ago. And, and then, so a year and a half, it's sitting there. Mm -hmm. Part of me says we either need to do this or we need to bury it. But yeah, and, and I, th I think at this point, I'm prone to just say, hey, let's, let's say we're not going to do this and the pull request can remain. We don't lose the code by closing the pull request. Just say, hey, this, this is not something we're ready to do at this time. I haven't had this conversation with Daniel Beck, but I think I think it's worth a conversation with him to see, hey, we think we should just close this one. Right. Um, I could see also, I mean, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing that, say something that we think Oleg, if, if we think we need this, that Oleg's suggestion is the way to go. Right. Or something. 
Yeah, and then then we could do an online help.jenkins.io or something like that, where it's yeah. a separate a separate URL that's clearly we can put by plugin by core etc. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, well as I say, I was just flagging things of maybe Great. we're looking at in the on to the next one. And I apologize, I've reached, we're past my oh, usual one hour time. limit. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is great. I'd propose we pause here unless there's something really urgent others want to be sure we, we want to get so to. This is just a list and um, I didn't see what you did. Shall we, shall I delete all the ones we did not discuss and just move them into the next agenda? Yeah, if you're okay with that, I think let's, this is getting us through systematically some of these older ones. So let's let's have you. I don't want to remove them now because you'll use them to copy into the next next right. week. But then I let's. Saw that other let's, one last week that we didn't discuss. I think I gave you a comment. I haven't gone back to. Right, that. and and I like that idea. But it should go into next Monday's meeting. Last week I screwed up and put it into the she codes. Right. Exactly. So we got here. Recommended end of discussion for this week. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. And I will annotate that. Okay. All right. Let's so, call it done for today. Thanks, everybody. I'll thanks try to get the recording posted. All right. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.